Hey guys, we are back with the Is It Good series, and if you're wondering about this series, this is where we pick apart high-level players and their builds, their play styles, specifically in games where there is something to lose. This is the semifinals of what if I remember was Heroes Lounge Division S for uh, North America. And with that being said, uh, we are... Let me delete chat, because who knows what they're going to be sharing in there. And today we're going to be talking about Maka's Rainer. So if you don't know who Maka is, Maka has been on several competitive teams. Maka is considered, in my opinion, one of the most consistent ranged assassin players in this game. And what do I mean by consistent? Um, while some of the best players are playmakers, some of the best players are consistent. A playmaker is someone who makes a huge play that makes a difference. A consistent player is someone who, whether your team is winning or losing, they are actively adding value to your game. They may not make the biggest plays, but they will consistently add huge amounts of value to your game. So what we're not going to be looking for is, we're not going to be looking for these plays that he's going to make the difference. Like, Heavy, for example, when we were looking at Heavy's video, uh, Heavy was landing a sleep dart that was leading to these kills that were completely changing the game. I want to look at Maka, where he pretty much just started off this fight and never stopped dealing damage this entire fight, allowing him to get relatively easy kills on the team and position in ways that made this so much easier. He did so much damage in this fight, it was unreal. More than 50% more damage than the opposing team's assassin player, uh, as well as just 3,000 damage at the start of this fight is incredible, allowing his team to pick up three kills because of the amount of damage that he did. So it's consistent damage. He's always repositioning after every single attack, and that allows him to be very unpredictable when you're going against someone like a um, high skill, sh skill shot hero like a Hanzo, or a hero that's combo based that still needs to land a single skill shot like Alarak. If Alarak can land a single W in a good position, he lands all of his abilities. But if you're constantly moving, even against camps uh, and waves, you're unpredictable and allows you to get more damage off for longer periods of time without needing to worry about it. Uh, he does his auto attack reset very well on Inspire and always stutter steps forward so that he never misses out on a single animation. He can keep up with people very easily by abusing Ace in the Hole. And that's why we're going to start talking about his build. Ace in the Hole is kind of just the best talent for Raynor. Once they threw both of those onto the same tier, I just was kind of blown away by um, how much value it has, even after it's nerf. So in this case, it says 15% more damage. This is because it's an older tournament. Um, it's still 10 it's 10%, but it's still the best talent to take. I will say, though, it's very competitive with Exterminator. So if you have a reason to go Exterminator, it's an amazing talent. Veteran Marksman takes quite a few stacks to be even, because you need to remember it only triggers every four attacks. So that percentage increase needs to be four attacks worth. Uh, so you normally need to multiply it by four. That's 40%. It could be arguably a little bit lower because this stack's kind of a little weird with Veteran's Marksman. And you can trigger Veteran's Marksman more on enemy heroes because you can charge it up on minions and get a couple hits off on enemies and then charge up on minions and etc. But at the end of the day, during fights, Ace in the Hole is going to give you the most value for most games and especially during the early portion of the game, which is the most important. The goal in almost all of these games is to end before the enemy team hits 20 and you're likely not going to be able to get as many stacks on Veterans Marksman in those cases. And if you're behind, it's going to be too risky to stack anyways, making, better, making Ace in the Hole better 99% of the time than Veterans Marksman, with Exterminator being something that you can throw in on maps that are situationally good, where you're going to be wanting to pick up camps a lot, or maps where you might need to race, because this talent is actually really good. Level 4, he takes Fight or Flight. What this talent does is it increases your or it reduces the cooldown of your E, making it to where it increases the amount of EEs that you can cast. It also gives you 25 armor while you're having this heal going on. This means you can prevent the amount of damage that's being done to you by 25%. This is effectively increasing your health by actually closer to 33%, because the way that it works on the calculator is in what a lot of people think is they go, okay, well, your effective health is, let's see, it's 1836, would be 18... 36 times 1.25 because that's the 25% armor that you have and they say oh your effective health is two or uh, 2295 but it's actually not that what it's doing is it's making it to where you're reducing the damage you're taking so instead of 18 
36, um, you're effectively taking, so instead of multiplying, you're gonna be dividing uh, by 0.75. So it's it, the old number was 2.295. Uh, this is the new number is 2.448. So effective health with armor is so much better than people think it is. And with that being said, I'm not saying that your entire health bar gets that 25 armor, but the most impactful amounts of time do. And that's usually where it's going to make a difference. And it also lowers the cooldown, which means you get more healing. Um, so it's just a really powerful talent. Arguably, sustaining rounds might be good in the solo lane, behemoth armor might be good in the solo lane, but if you're in the four man, uh, you're gonna be needing to double soak for your teams and not always stacking off of the enemy heroes. You're gonna need to be able to deal with burst, which this is the best talent for dealing with burst. So it deals with burst, it deals with sustain, and it's great when you're in the four man. He's covering the soak for his team. Uh, when, the second that his team has already won that objective, he immediately starts going mid. It looks like a shot call was made where he needed to go down here. And during the, this camp being picked up, I do want to point out his level 7 talent. Unstable Compound. This is the new talent after they just moved um, the Ace in the Hole extra slow over on level 1. Unstable Compound increases the area of Give Him Some Pepper by 15%. It increases the... Uh, or, sorry, each enemy hero hit by giving him some pepper grants you 10 mana and reduces the cooldown of penetrating round and inspire inspire is your auto attack reset and your auto attack speed increase look at his stutter stepping as he's chasing people he's attacking him moving in the direction that they're going meaning that even when they're trying to run away he's getting closer and closer to their escape than they are so, it, because that extra 10% movement speed that he's giving them, and soon at level 13, he'll have extra movement speed, allowing him to actually move to the enemy's escape faster than they can. Um, right now, he can move about the same speed as them when he has them slowed. So, his stutter stepping is key to how he's so successful in chases. Now, uh, as we're approaching the rest of this game, he hasn't backed, guys. He hasn't backed this entire game. He hasn't died this entire game. He's just picked up Fountains off cooldown. He's grabbed Globes whenever he can grab Globes. He's been safe in all of the lanes that he's in. He's soaked for almost this entire game. And despite soaking, he's holding up in kills. Or in damage anyways. Dealing more damage than anyone on the, on the opposing team. And the only person he's being out damaged by is a Chen on his team. Which is very clear that there's a brawl going on because Chen's able to do 12,000 he self-healing, 13,000 damage versus a Yurel who's also topping the charts on their team. So it's clear that there's a major brawl going on in top lane that's kind of padding their stats a little bit. So if we ignore the top laner, uh, his damage is, is so much higher than the rest of the people on his team. It's kind of hard to call out Tiger JK just because he is doing camps for his team the whole time. He doesn't have any time to do any hero damage, but this is something that I still want to point out a lot because, I mean, look at that heal too. Immediately gets back up. He's holding the lane against two different people right now, and he simply just knocks him away. Gets dropped though. Uh, you did see the heal coming out from Heavy the second after he died, but uh, it was actually probably like a millisecond after he died. Uh, maybe the adrenaline rush was popped a little too early. I think that could have resulted in him getting an extra kill um, but with that being said level 10 he picks up hyperion now hyperion's not the only thing that he ever takes he takes rainers raiders a lot um hyperion this could have been a call from his team saying hey we want to siege hard on this first dragonite that we win so let's take hyperion and let's just like try to end the game um and it's a really great talent for when you're trying to push and end the game early rainers raider is so much better if you're trying to focus down a single target because it gives you a lot of single target damage but he could also be worried about possibly going for like a divine palm where if he's focusing on a single target it's easy for karazim to say and eh, that single target you were focusing on can't die and then you have to switch targets um so that's one of those things and we see again he does an auto attack reset now the second auto attack wasn't necessary he uses a q to peel off of his team and he pops a hyperion in a way that allows him to quickly take out the fort allowing his team to take less damage from that uh, that fort. In this case, he is just trying to get away from his the enemy team, pops his E, gains his life back, and has that armor to prevent any damage. Deals some quick damage over on the opposing team, 
and he's watching the enemy cooldowns. So he's watching to see when the enemy cooldowns are going to be available. He knows that the only person that has anything that can scare him is Alarak. But if Alarak goes for his pull, he can simply knock Alarak away before he lands the Q. And that's exactly what he did. He's watching carefully. And this is what you should be doing as an assassin main. Is you should know what every other assassin brings to the table. Because this is your role. And so he knows what all the other assassins bring to the table, and he knows when he can just play completely aggressive and not worry about the enemy team because he goes, all you guys have available is this pull. And if I press Q and you do the Q, the, the pull, I'm going to just take you out. And that's exactly what happens. In this case, he doesn't wake him up until after Tiger JK has already channeled half of it, but uh, unfortunately, probably actually could have waited just a second longer on that, and they might have been able to get it. They might not have because of top lane, uh, but either way. At this point, he's just going to go back to being consistent, right? He's looking, can he get more value by joining his team middle, or can he get more value by pushing out bottom? And in this case, his team gets control over top again, and he's going to do his best to just keep people pushed away, allowing his team to get a Dragonite. With this Dragonite, he will have Hyperion up in 20 seconds. The Dragonite lasts for one minute. They're going to push aggressively to try to destroy the turrets, making it to where the Dragonite takes less damage. And he's still moving unpredictably, even when there's no enemies around. Because he doesn't know if an enemy might be sitting around. And it's just a good habit to have, honestly. Ooh, that's a different talent. So normally Giddy Up is picked in like 90% of the situations. But let's see, what does this talent do? And why would Maka think that this is the talent to pick up this tier? Reduce the mana cost of penetrating around from 65 to 45. And it's cooldown by 3 seconds. So it goes from a 10 to a 7 second cooldown. While Inspire is active, penetrating round slow is increased by 20%. It normally slows by 20%, now it'll slow by 40% um, as long as your Inspire is active. So this kind of gives like a combo. Penetrating round can be used more often. During your W, you can slow more often. And remember that there's a bit of a combo that I've talked about on Rainer before, where if you uh, charge up to where you're almost about to a crit, you can then auto attack then W to reset so you can get that crit on the target and use a Q, so it's a huge amount of burst in a small amount of time. On an assassin, that does about 50% of their health, and if you were able to follow up that 50% of their health with a 40% slow, that's likely a kill. At the very least, that's likely a target that's going to be set up by another CC from your team. So, I think it's okay. Um... The times where you might need to go giddy up are on different maps. So this is something that you may want to follow Maka. Check the, the description. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find any of his social. Follow Maka. Ask him. See if there's times where he prefers to go giddy up versus times where he did, uh, prefers to go debilitating rounds. You see that he stops attacking Noah until it, the thing's over. The second the palm's over, he quickly gets a kill. And at that point, he's kind of just rolling through, using Hyperion to destroy the turrets quickly and do some damage to the keep. At this point, the Dragonite's almost gone, and their team most likely won't be able to take this keep unless they're actually really getting some damage done. He just did that combo that I was talking about. Auto attack, W to reset the auto attack, getting the crit, using Q to slow the target, and that led to the kill onto the Karazim. And it just looks like an absolute stomp at this point, where the, I mean, Maka is really, really getting work done. The extra movement speed coming out from Hacho, Troy, and Noah trying to see if they can't pick someone off and Maka turns around quickly takes him out with the help of Tiger JK. And uh, it's, it's brutal. At this point, it is just brutal. So he decides to go for a fountain again. Maka just does not want to back. Uh, I probably would have backed in that situation and then saved my fountain for a time that I might need it later. But honestly, when would you need it later? So this is an area where I probably would have made a mistake as opposed to Maka. They are missing a teeny bit of soak right here though, so uh, looks like both of them head over there to make sure that they can pick up this soak. Only missed one, not that big of a deal. In this case, he's just gonna poke. And again, unpredictable. Every auto attack, he steps up, auto attack, steps back. Steps up, auto attack, steps back. And each time when he's doing that, um, he's, he's unpredictable and it makes it hard to get him because after each auto attack, he's gonna step away, which means that you can only hit him when he's hitting you. And that's it. And if you're not a, a ranged person, and if you even take a little too long, even if your ping is a little too high, your ability is going to happen too late and it's going to miss. So having that unpredictable nature while you're moving around is huge. 
Now, they're approaching level 16. This is usually the time where teams don't want to force a fight. They want to wait until they hit 16, force a fight at 16. This is the greatest time for the opposing team to force this fight. Hacho's going in. Hacho pops that Sanctification. This is all targets that he's not going to be able to attack. Sanctification ends ends up getting palmed, and a lot of damage is going off onto Maka, but Maka is still going strong, being healed up by Heavy. Gets a bunch of heals coming out from heavy is able to stay alive long enough to where he's able to reposition get a couple more heals and they go back in uh, a lot of credit to heavy on that part but remember that value of that 25 armor if that wasn't in there there's a good chance he would have died anyways and now look at this they lost one person for three despite the fact that I mean, they probably shouldn't have been there in the first place, but now that they're there, that's what's happening. Level 16, the talent he takes is Paint Them Red. Increase the damage of Penetrating Run by 50% and you heal for 90% of the damage it deals. With a lower cooldown on your Penetrating Round, that allows you a great tool to finish off targets and peel off of yourself. In this case, you can look at that burst. 70% of Noah's health on that Alarak in under 2 seconds. It's incredible. You guys need to practice that combo. Um, it's not necessarily to 100 to 0 someone, unless they're at like 70% health, then you 70 to 0 them. Uh, the reason of that is to get them out of the fight quickly. Someone starts approaching you when you're at the flank, you immediately get them out of the fight. So he grabs the bottom lane, immediately heads up over here to see if he can help his team grab this Dragonite. Up top though, we see Jaina having a difficult time versus two different people. Uh, Jaina's not going to win in a 1v1 against a Urel alone, and going against two or three people, it's going to make it worse. He pops his armor so he can survive. Holy Ground is going to keep him from getting away. He might even pop Hyperion in the situation just to get some extra damage off, paint them red, tops him off after that, and now it's a point where he just goes and gets that consistent value that we've seen over and over and over. Um, and so despite losing Jaina in that situation, they have stabilized. He's getting a little low on mana, but Maka is not one to back. He is not going to press that B button. He is just going to keep hitting that fountain. Um, whenever it's up, grabbing globes. Whenever the fountain's not up. And that's all he needs. If you find yourself getting a lot of wasted time in games, you need to watch this. This is why I'd say he's, in my opinion, one of the most consistent ranged assassins that I've ever seen. Because... He's always getting value, whether his team's ahead or behind, and every second of every game, he's doing something to bring his team in in uh, in the lead, and somehow, or at least bring them back into this game. Uh, I I never see him wandering around not knowing what to do. He's always beelining to something important every second of every game. Now, I, I don't see him usually make too many, like, crazy plays either, though. Like, um, if I see him on, like, Sylvanas, I never see him, like, dive into the backline and kill, like, their entire backline or anything. But I also see him consistently win more than he loses. So, it's, uh, it's just consistency. There's, there's benefits to both. I think consistency is usually more valuable in pro scenes because, um, it's... If you know that if you can get a lead against a team, you just win because they're, they're a team that doesn't play very consistent. Um, that's a strategy. Is Let's play teams that win early game where they're more valuable in the early levels. Like For example, let's use like Chromie and Varian. They get their ultimates earlier than an opposing team. So you can likely force fights earlier, get kills, get leads. And then teams that are playmakers are never going to... Um, it's not that they're never going to be able to come back, because playmakers can be a great way to get back if you're at a deficit. But if they don't play consistently, as well as being a playmaker, then they're going to just struggle with that deficit. So being able to play consistently allows them to keep that value going. Uh, we see Jaina getting taken out there, and, and again, it's not that Jaina did anything wrong. These are two amazing teams going against each other. This is the semifinals, and it is a brutal semifinals. And, and all of these players are Grandmasters, by the way. Um, Troy1010, he's been on multiple competitive teams. I mean, uh, funds. We've seen Porky a lot. I've done videos with Porky. He's one of my friends. He's got some great build ideas. His team has won major events. In fact, they won NGS. Um, so they... Actually, it was Vince's team that won NGS, but uh, th this last time... Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess. And this is where they just close out the game. 
Don't even worry. They get three kills, end the game. And this is something that a lot of these teams do, and these competitive teams do, is if you get three kills, you close out the game. Any anytime after level 16, if, if there is a keep open and you get three kills, you just close out the game. And that's why Slet TV, this team that we're watching right now, they are so active in getting these structures. Whenever they get a couple kills early, they get a couple structures. Get a couple kills, get a couple structures. And then when the game gets close to ending, this is exactly what they do. They just go, you know what? We just close out the game. We got three kills, we close out the game. The lead difference wasn't even that much. It was a level and a half. Um, but it's just the fact that they were so consistent. Maka never died, stayed over 10,000 damage more than, oh, he did die. Yeah, he did die. Never mind. Um, but 12,000 damage over the, the opposing team, top of siege damage, uh, almost higher in experience contributed than the soul lane, which is very difficult to do because the soul lane tends to double soak and gets a lane all by themselves to soak without needing to compete with experience with other people. So he was able to completely carry this game and just absolutely looked like he was smurfing in this game. Whenever anyone stepped up to him, he's just like, there goes 70% of your health. Do you still want to fight? Oh, you still want to fight? I just killed your whole team. Are you sure you still want to fight? Okay, I just killed all your structures. Do you still want to fight? Because this game's over now. Like, this is exactly what Maka did. Is his build good? His build is very good. I think the only thing that's different from the meta build is debilitating rounds, and we saw why he used it. It allowed him to secure kills that he normally wouldn't have, and it allowed him to stay alive a little bit longer when he abused the fact that he had painted them red. He survived some fights that he probably shouldn't have. At level 20, uh, this is a talent tier where a lot of people go with different things, but I have seen Maka take Execute in the past. Uh, you can ask him if that's the talent that he would normally take. I will throw the whole build down in the comments below so you guys can copy and paste it, use this in your games. Um, but yeah, make sure to give Maka a follow. And that is that. It is overall a very, very good playstyle of Raynor. Unpredictable movement constant stutter stepping in the direction that you're you feel the flow of the team fight going and then finally uh we have a very high damage hero that would know then and a player that knows when to burst thank you guys so much for watching feel free to check out all of my other videos as well as the others in the is it good series this series is going to continue on as long as there is any sort of competitive scene in here's the storm i will pull apart any of the games that i can get my hands on the replays so if you are in these games and would like to be featured and you're in one of the finals of one of these competitive games send me over the replays because that's all i really need to, to to kind of break down these games i watch them a couple times and see the areas where major things happen so Thank you guys so much for watching and feel free to check out all of my other videos.